pleasant day to all today we are going to start with an important topic we know about gravitation so the most important topic today we are going to see is gravitation and before that uh, in the beginning everyone said that earth is a object which is circle in shape there is round in shape but later on they found that it is elliptical in shape and same as we know there are certain planets that revolve around the earth and they also told that those planets revolve around the earth in a circular orbit before that what is an orbit we know a path that is needed for the planets to move around so that is called as orbit here fine but kepler was the one who found that that planets all revolve around the earth in a elliptical orbit so he proved that with three laws we have three kepler's law so those laws we can see first let me write a topic on the board the topic we are going to start is kepler's law so how many laws i told you there are three laws the first law here is law of orbit second law is law of area and the third law here is law of period so there is a connectivity between all these three laws and as well it is going to show that it moves around in a elliptical orbit with sun at the center point so what are the three laws here law of orbit law of area and law of period so what are the three laws again let me repeat law of orbit law of area and law of period so first i'm going to explain you law of orbit so what is law of orbit sun is the major thing so just imagine we have sun here and also we have the path this is the elliptical path okay this is the elliptical path where planets move around in this path and also you can see that sun at one place it's not at the center but it's near to the planet so you can split this into two see you can make it into two clear where this is the major axis this is the major axis whereas this is the minor axis clear and second thing is they have made this as perihelion this major axis is named as perihelion and this minor axis is named as aphelion clear so what is the center here sun where sun is such one of the foci sun is at one of the foci it's not exactly in the middle instead it is like one of the corner in the elliptical part so we say that sun is such one of the foci so the definition here we can see here so definition is each planet that revolve around each planet that revolve around where sun is one of the foci so sun is at one of the foci whereas all the planets revolve around the sun in a elliptical path and what are the two important keywords here one is major axis which is perihelion and second thing is minor axis which is called as aphelion clear so each planet that revolve around the sun having sun at one of its foci clear and second law what is the second law here law of area so there is a relation between the word area and the law so what is the relation same here consider sun and the planets revolving around it. and the planets revolving around the sun for example uh, a planet is moving here from this place to this place clear so this is the movement of the planet for annually in one month it has traveled to a distance clear and same here it will be moving uh, all through the orbit and here 
See the same. It takes the same plant. The same plant moves here in same one month, and it covers the equal distance. And it covers the equal distance in one month. For example, you can say the athletic track. So if you have been, have you seen the athletic track? If someone is running about two hundred meters. Okay, it's not a straight. It's, it's like a curved path we have taken here. If someone is running 200 meters, if six, six athletes or four athletes are running for 200 meters, the first one will be placed here, asked to sit here, and the second one will not be placed same along like this. Instead, the second one will be placed here, third one will be here, and the fourth one will be here. The reason behind this, the curve it takes a long path when we compare to this axis. Am I clear? So here it cuts very sharp, but here the cut takes a long thing. So that to adjust that distance here, they have placed the athletes. They will be placing the athletes, athletes in different places. The same, even though this distance is little higher, it shown like it is little higher, but it covers equal area in equal interval of time. So what is the definition here? We can say is. Sweeps away equal area. Sweeps away equal area in equal interval of time. So this is the second law. Clear? Okay. Plus second law, which is law of area. And one more thing here we can say we know when we are close to the earth, g will be higher. What is g? We know g is gravity. So when we are close to the earth. Gravity will be high, and when we are away from the earth, gravity will be low. So that is the reason when they climb a mountain or when they fly in parachutes, they fly because of the less gravity. So when they are close to the earth, when they are close to the earth, g will be high. I am representing high in the form of an arrow mark, and when they are away from the earth, when they are away from the earth, g will be less. Clear. So we can see the second law of area. The definition of second law of area here is sweeps away equal area in equal interval of time. Sweeps away equal area in equal interval of time. And the key word we can say is when the planets are close to the Earth, it moves very faster. It rotates very faster. And when it is far away from the Earth, it rotates very slow. Because of the gravity. What's the reason behind that? Because of g. And what's the value of g? G is equal to 9.8 meter per second square. Clear. And next we are going to start the third law, which is law of period. So period means generally we will use this word for time period, right? First, let me write the formula here. T square is directly proportional to A cube. So, what is C? T here is time period. And A here is area. So, the time period is equal to the area. It is directly proportional to. If time increases, like area increases, along with that, the time also increases. For example, if I want to go one, if I uh, if want to reach one kilometer within two minutes, uh, and in two, if I want to go two kilometers, it will take another two more minutes. If it is three kilometer, another two more minutes. So it goes on like that. If area gets increased as well, the time period also get increased here. See, same. I have sun at the center. I have the planet. Only one planet can go in one orbit. Same as. Different planets moves around with different orbits. So here, this, this like this, it goes on. Okay, we see the distance. The sun is the center. When we compare this, distances differ. So according to the distance, the and already in the second law itself, we, I have told that um, based on if it is closer to the sun. Okay, if the Earth is closer to the Earth is closer to another planet. It moves very faster as when it is far away. More than it is far away. So same here. It is far away. If the planets are far away. It moves very slow. So which proves that p square is directly proportional to a cube. Clear. And also we can say p square per a cube is equal to constant. So what is the definition we can say here is the time period for each 
level union will be directly proportional to the area. That is the definition for law of period. Here, the t square is directly proportional to a cube. And also, we can say t square by a cube is equal to constant. Here, t square by a cube is equal to constant. So, this is the three laws of <coughs> three laws for Kepler. As I have started with Kepler's law, I have said there are three laws: law of a orbit, law of area, and law of period. Orbit shows you sun at the center and the planets revolve around. And second thing for the law of orbit, it sweeps away equal area in equal intervals of time. And for the law of period, where the time period is directly proportional to area. Clear? And we also have the universal law of gravitation along with this. We can see it in the next class. Thank you.